But what did they think they were doing for you? They weren't doing anything for me. What did they think they were doing for you? Okay, okay. If you were me and I am you, everything you do is for you, is for me too. So what did they oh, think? Oh, if you're in one mind, if I am you and you are me and we are all together, and then who's responsible for a calm together over me right now? Da, 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 da. It's all his fault. Oh, no, no, it's his fault. No, we put another false face on it. It's Halloween. It's your fault. So now, wait a minute. Criminal behavior's the same. It's mundane in most minds. Charles Miles Manson, born November 12, 1934, and died November 19, 2017. He was an American criminal musician who led the Manson family, a cult based in California, in the late 1960s. Some of the members committed a series of nine murders at four locations in July and August of 1969. In 1971, Manson was convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder for the deaths of seven people, including the film actress Sharon Tate. The prosecution contended that, while Manson never directly ordered the murders, his ideology consists of an overt act of conspiracy. Then they modified the death penalty. Were you happy when that was done? Was I happy when what was done? When you found out that you weren't going to the gas chamber. You're talking about dying. Now, it gets me nervous. Why? Did you have any thoughts about something? Was you wanting to go anywhere? Were you happy when you found out you weren't going to go to the gas chamber, Charles? Uh, I knew I wasn't going to go to the gas chamber because I hadn't done anything wrong. You scared to die? Sometimes I feel I'm scared to live. Living is what scares me. Dying is easy. Uh... Before the murders, Manson had spent more than half his life in correctional institutions. While gathering his cult following, Manson was a singer-songwriter on the fringe of the Los Angeles music industry, and chiefly through a chance association with Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, who introduced Manson to the record producer, Terry Melcher. In 1968, the Beach Boys recorded Manson's song, Cease to Exist, and renamed Never Learn Not to Love as the single B-side, but without a credit to Manson. Afterward, Manson attempted to secure a record contract through Melcher, but was unsuccessful. Well, I had done what he said for about 20 years. I'd done everything he told me to do. And I got to thinking, now, why don't this guy do something I tell him to do? And he said, uh, no. I said, well, how comes I'm always doing what you tell me to do, but then you never do what I say do? And he said, well, blah, blah, blah. So I said, now you do what I say. And he said, no. I said, you do exactly what I say. And he said, no. I'm telling you. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You do exactly what I say. And that's about the extent of it. All this all cult, all that hocus pocus stuff that you guys are playing, I don't know nothing about all you that. You know nothing about something called Helter Skelter. Tell me, Charles, I don't know. It's a fairy, it's worse than a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. Manson would often talk about the Beatles, including the Opsios 1968 album. According to Los Angeles County District Attorney, Vincent Bugliosi, Manson felt guided by his interpretation of the Beatles lyrics and adopted the term Helter Skelter to describe an impending apocalyptic race war. During his trial, Bugalossi argued that Manson had intended to start a race war, although Manson and others disputed to this. Contemporary interviewers and trial witness testimony insisted that the Tala Bianca murders were copycat crimes intended to exonerate Manson's friend Bobby. Manson himself denied being having instructed anyone to murder anyone. Manson's notoriety was an emblem of insanity, violence and the Maccabee influenced pop culture. Recordings of songs written and performed by Manson were released commercially starting with Lie, The Love and Terror Cult 1970. 
After his incarceration, some of his songs were covered by various artists. Although he was originally sentenced to death in 1971, his sentence was commuted to life with the possibility of parole after California Supreme Court invalidated the state's death penalty statute in 1972. He served his life sentence at California State Prison, Cochrane, and died at the age of 83 in late 2017.